Today, Woody Guthrie from a museum to an iconic festival, plus big musical legend Byron Berline, and the name on everybody's lips, John Fulbright. Travel with Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. Hi, and welcome to Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lawley. We're coming to you from Guthrie, specifically Byron Berline's Double Stop Fiddle Shop and Music Hall. We're in the town of Guthrie, but we're also going to be spending a little time with Woody Guthrie this week, checking out some destinations that pay homage to that rambling man. But first, it's time to start fiddling around. Now, Byron Berline is considered one of the world's premier fiddle players, and when you visit him here at the Double Stop Fiddle Shop and Music Hall, it's very easy to see why he is considered a musical legend. He started playing when he was five, and today Byron Berline can play it all from bluegrass, country, old time, rock to much more. He's played with an impressive list of musicians from the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Elton John, the Duber Brothers, and Willie Nelson and Rod Stewart, just to name a few. In 1996, when he and his wife moved back here from California, Byron opened up the Double Stop Fiddle Shop and Music Hall. Byron says his dad was a fiddle collector, and in 1987, he started collecting. And it just kind of gets into you like a rusty fish hook, an old man told me one time. And it does, you know. Well, I love trading and selling and swapping instruments. And, and the end result is the Double Stop Fiddle Shop and Music Hall in Guthrie. Yeah, I mean, I've got probably a better selection of violins or fiddles, whatever you want to call them. There's no difference. A lot of people think there's a difference between a fiddle and a violin. I said, well, what's the difference between a car and an automobile? And they said, oh, well, I guess there's nothing. <laughs> Byron's not only played with the top names in the music industry, but has also entertained millions all over the world. And now on certain designated Saturdays, you can hear him play and his band live in the music hall located upstairs from the fiddle shop. Here I have an upstairs music hall strictly for that. So I don't have to move any instruments. They just turn lights on and go. We've had people here, been season ticket holders from when we first opened up. And yeah, they've been real faithful clients and people that uh, they love the music. Byron also was the driving force and founder behind what has now become an enormously popular event, the Oklahoma International Bluegrass Festival. A big reason Mumford and Sons selected Guthrie as a location for their upcoming concert is because of Byron. Byron's big break came when he was asked to play with Bill Monroe and then the Dillards. He says you never know when something will lead to another opportunity, but you have to get out there and play. Uh, I tell a lot of people, you know, they come in here that, that are aspiring musicians, I say, you can't just sit home by the phone and expect people to call you. I mean, you do, you have to get out and play. I mean, that's how I was discovered by the Dillards. I was out playing in this show, and I met them. Byron adds everyone has to have their own sound. It's hard to describe music anyway. You just have to listen to it and figure out yourself what you think about it. Most people say, what kind of music you play? I say, it's good, I hope. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what makes Byron Berline one of the most respected musicians in the world. He was known as the Dust Bowl Troubadour, and he's influenced countless musicians over the years. And now there's a brand new center in Tulsa that pays tribute to Woody Guthrie's life and legacy, and our Abby Curran is one of the first ones to check it out. Tulsa's Brady Arts District has seen a ton of growth recently, and the Woody Guthrie Center is a huge part of that. Being here and being part of the rejuvenation of the Brady Arts District is just amazing. Um, Every time I walk outside, it seems like there's something else that I see that's new. The Philbrook uh, downtown, we've got the Arts and Humanities building right behind us, Guthrie Green across the street. I mean, it's a gorgeous place to be and so much to do. The George Kaiser Family Foundation acquired the Woody Guthrie archives from Guthrie's daughter, Nora. What started out as a collection turned into an inspiring center for people from all over the world to visit. We want them to see Woody's example of how he used his creativity to find his voice, give that voice to those who felt that they were voiceless, power to those who felt that they were powerless, and speak out about his world. And then 
We want people to take that away from the center and go and create something on their own. At the Woody Guthrie Center, you'll find his original instruments, the original handwritten lyrics of This Land is Your Land, and an art gallery of photographs celebrating the life of Guthrie himself. For Oklahoma and Tulsa, we, we often forget to recognize those people around us, our native sons and daughters who are creative and who have brought recognition to our state worldwide and internationally. And I think this is important that we recognize these folks. In addition to the historical artifacts, the center invites you to check out all of the interactive pieces. Listen to Guthrie's tunes at the music bar, an interactive map, a theater room featuring a short film on Guthrie's life, a lyric writing station, and a section devoted to learning more about the Dust Bowl era. We want you to get in the middle of them, touch them, play with them, create your own songs, and uh, totally experience what we have to offer. Woody Guthrie continues to inspire people today with his powerful lyrics and creative talent. This center honors his life and legacy. Next time you're in Tulsa, stop by and check it out or attend one of their concert series or educational programs. I don't think Woody would have ever thought that a, a little hometown boy from Okima, Oklahoma would have had some place like this uh, showing all of his work. From the Woody Guthrie Center in Tulsa's Brady Arts District, I'm Abby Curran. All right, leave that remote alone. Stay close by because we have more on the way. Up next, we're going to meet the man who will be the headliner at this year's Woody Fest. He's the Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter everybody's talking about, and we'll step inside the home that inspires him when AAA's Discover Oklahoma returns right after this. On the road, one never knows what lies ahead. Indubitably, almost every week, one encounters bad form from Sunday drivers. Sheer rudeness begets the occasional fender bender. Precisely why we have insurance from AAA. Here, here. A name drivers can trust. Especially good ones. Especially great ones. Cheers! Plenty of room to swing a rope. Plenty of heart and plenty of home. Oklahoma weather with sleeping down the plane. And the way being we can sure smell sweet. Where the wind comes right behind the rain. Oklahoma every night. My honey lemon I sit alone and talk. And watch your heart. Home. Come see for yourself. Hail. Hail. It's just frozen rain. Can we just please pull over? There's going to be dents all over the car. What are we, storm chasers? This is insane. Hmm. Until there's a climate control knob that actually controls the climate. See, thank you for agreeing with me. There's the next best thing, insurance from AAA. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma Talking Music this week. Woody Guthrie, Byron Berline, and now another Oki musician, a young man who is blazing his own trail. He certainly is. John Fulbright's talents as a singer-songwriter have captured major attention, and our Shell Wagner recently caught up with him in his hometown. Some folks say the smaller the town, the bigger the daydreams. Well, this is Bearden, Oklahoma, population 140. So if you go by that old adage, it should come as no surprise that someone from this tiny town is making such a big splash. Days. A tour of Bearden won't take you long. Besides the school, the baseball field, and a few cottages, this community along a shady section of Highway 48 is as quiet as they come. And for one young man, that serenity has proven to be a very good thing. I learned to play the piano because there's nothing to do out here. There's not a sidewalk to skate on and there's not a mall to go hang out in. And so, you know, I started picking up instruments and I started playing the piano. 
eventually started writing songs. The songwriting that started here still happens here on this patch of land that John calls home. The only fight that remains is called keeping hope alive. The modest clapboard house, which has been in the family for generations and served as a venue for his album cover, is the one place on earth where this thoughtful musician feels most rooted and most inspired. Because this is where I can come write songs, you know, cook my own meals, sleep in my own bed, think my own thoughts. Most of the time I'm looking out this window, I got a gorgeous sunset over here that, that goes down. I got a lot of sunset lines and a lot of songs because of that. A lot of songs start out, Nowhere to be found starts out. Shadows linger, evenings fade, to where all days are bound. Nighttime falls on plans I've made. Now there's nowhere to be found. I'm staring out that window, and so a sunset can kick off just a general feeling of something that's big. Bearden is only 10 miles from Okima, and it was there in a local Okima cafe where John first tried his hand at performing. I'd set it up on Friday nights and just start playing. And I'd have a big notebook full of stuff that I like and print it off with lyrics and stuff, and I'd just sing every song that I liked until my voice was out. Singing for a few random tips at the cafe eventually led to John having an actual paid gig at a local winery. A guy named Tom Skinner was playing over there, and he was one of the first guys that I saw that was just so good and not famous and didn't really want to be famous. And I didn't know that that existed, that there was a world in which you could play music and not be rich and famous, but still be happy and still do your own thing. John Fulbright has got the do his own thing part down pat, but it's the not getting famous part that he's having a bit of trouble with, due in part to a recent Grammy nomination. Greg Johnson called me, he's managing me, he calls me and he says, I don't want you to get your hopes up, but they are doing Grammy stuff right now. He says, the, the word on the street, the, I don't know what this grapevine is that he's listening to, but, is that there's a very small chance that you could get nominated in the Americana category. And so I go, yeah, yeah, big deal. You know, we both kind of laughed and said, wouldn't that be something? Before long, the call came. It was official. John Fulbright was a Grammy-nominated musician. You know, just, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what to do with my hands. I didn't know what to do with, with any of it. I didn't know what it meant. Then came word that he would also be performing at the awards on national television. I sort of had a little personal breakdown walking into the place because I kept going, I'm from Bearden, Oklahoma, and I'm not supposed to be here right now. The legendary Bonnie Raitt edged out John that evening to take home the Grammy statuette, but the name John Fulbright was already on everybody's lips. These days, it's not often that John can sneak into a venue without attracting a crowd. He's humbled by that, but says that his focus is really just on the music and on trying to get better. I never got into any of this to do anything but just be good at it. And that's all I'm trying to do. If it's a song, I want to be a good songwriter. If it's a piano, I want to be a good piano player. And, and I never wanted to be a star. I'm scared to death of that, you know? Money would be nice. Uh, but as far as the rest of it, I think as long as I'm focusing on trying to be a better whatever it is that I'm, that I'm doing, then the rest hopefully will fall into place. It seems to me that it already has. With John Fulbright in Bearden, I'm Shell Wagner.
All right, coming up, the event that's become a summertime ritual for folks from around the country. We're off to Okima and the music festival that honors Woody Guthrie when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues in two short minutes. We had some family members that had switched to AAA and they kept telling us how much money they were saving and kept telling us that we should look into it. And so we decided that we should go see what, what we could do. We have three kids and there's not a lot of money left at the end of every month. And so any penny that you can save is a big deal. AAA was something I always heard of when I was growing up. And when people talked about it, they talked about it in a reliable way. And so when we switched to AAA, um, it was something that we just trusted from the beginning. It ended up saving us quite a bit. Our car insurance alone saved us probably about $600 a year. Our life insurance, we were actually able to double our coverage and our premium still went down um, close to about half as well. Again, it's not something you ever want to think about as you grow up and become a grown up with a family, but it's definitely something that you need to have. Having insurance is important. Having affordable insurance that you can trust is a blessing. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma, hanging with some musical legends this week. And speaking of legends, Woody Guthrie really does personify an Oklahoma spirit. So much so that sometimes we forget that he really is an international icon. Woody fans from far and wide make their way to his hometown of Okima each July for a music festival that has become one of our show Wagner's very favorites. Woody Guthrie wrote more than 3,000 songs and was a powerful influence on artists like Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan, and many more. His words, like, this land is your land, are so woven into American culture that it is difficult to separate Woody Guthrie from who we are as a people. In preparing for this story, I became fascinated with this restless philosopher and was anxious to tap into the spirit of Woody Guthrie with my girls. We started at the Okfuski County Historical Museum, where we soaked in his words, doodles, and memorabilia. Woody's sister Mary Jo was accessible throughout the festival, sharing insights on her famous brother. We're all optimists. If it's not a good day, make it a good day. It's up to you to make your life good. As if following a treasure map, we tracked down Okima's iconic water towers and the carved cedar folk art on the hill where Woody's boyhood home once stood. My daughters traced his signature, once pushed into fresh cement outside an Okima storefront. Wednesday night's concert is the only ticketed one, which makes it possible for the rest of the concerts to remain free of charge. Music seems to float by on the summer breeze from multiple venues, like the historic Crystal Theater, from the basement of the Brick Street Cafe, from beneath the shade trees of Lou's Rocky Road Tavern, and from the epic open-air stage at Pastures of Plenty. Some of these people are artists that I've heard for many years, like Jimmy LaFave and the Red Dirt Rangers, people who come every year. Uh, others, I've discovered them right here at this festival. The Burns sisters that are gonna be playing outside tonight, the Pasture of Plenty, uh, do harmonies that'll give you goosebumps, you know? And they're from upstate New York but they love coming here to Oklahoma to be a part of the Woody Guthrie Festival. Isn't that cool? <laughs> My girls really dug the whimsical kids festival in the park, complete with crafts and games and child-friendly folk singers. Love is the heart's rainbow. Film screenings offered us further insight into Woody's life and journey, which tragically included a sinister illness. Woody Guthrie died on October 3, 1967, but his songs live on. You can hear them in schoolyards and at union rallies, over the radio and through open windows. Songs so familiar they become our collective theme song. They are, after all, the music of the people. At the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival in Okima, I'm Shel Wagner. This land was made. All right, coming up next, well, Jennifer, guess what? We're headed to, to your neck of the woods. Mm. We'll have your cray-worthy cuisine in Jones, USA, when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continue. It was Friday the 13th. It was uh, a dark and windy night. And all of a sudden, uh, we heard a thump thump. There was a very large 40,000 pound elm tree laying on our house. And the first call I made was to my AAA agent, Leanna Osborne. It's probably around 8.30 and I was just walking around the house and my cell phone rings and I answer it and it's Christy and she's got this panic voice and she's like, 
a tree is falling on my house. What should I do? She said, I need to make some phone calls. Why don't you call 911? Call 911 because nobody knows what to do in that situation. So we called 911 and the fire department came and they said, this tree is gonna take this wall down. You need to get out of the house. And then a week later, there was a ferocious hailstorm and our whole roof was wiped out. And again, I was calling Leanna going, Leanna. Long story short, by the time it was all said and done, I don't know what she did, she worked magic. All I can say is, I love AAA. A giant robot of unknown origin has invaded the city and has taken over. You're gonna need this. All attempts to remove the bag have Now, get an F-150 with a blockbuster deal. 0% financing for 60 months, or up to 8,500 in total savings, only at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other great things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. Hi, Chuck May here with AAA Oklahoma. Did you know distracted driving causes up to 8,000 crashes a day in the U.S.? Here's another fact. Texting drivers are 23 times more likely to cause a crash than a drunk driver. And under certain circumstances, eating, smoking, or changing the station can be just as dangerous as texting or talking on your cell. So if distracted driving is that dangerous, why does it make up more than 50% of our time behind the wheel? Why do 94% of us agree that texting or emailing while driving is unacceptable, but one third of us admit to doing that while driving? And did you know that passengers, especially young children and infants, are one of the most frequently reported causes of distraction? At AAA, we're committed to making the roads safer for everyone. Help protect yourself and all the other drivers around you by avoiding distractions and staying focused on the road. To learn more, visit AAA.com. AAA, for the ones who matter most to you. Dino and I both consider ourselves to be onion ring aficionados. We do, but let's not forget our affection for what I refer to lovingly as pie, <laughs> or actually really good juicy hamburgers. Yeah. And if you put all of that together, you come up with a place, immediately comes to mind for me because it's near and dear to my heart and near to my house. Richard Sheffield wanted to run a restaurant for years and he knew just the kind of restaurant he wanted to run. An old fashioned burger joint that everybody kind of talks about. Oh man, those are some of the best burgers. You know, uh, we, we try to do everything fresh as much as we possibly can. And that's what we, that's our key goal. I have to say, I think your onion rings are probably the best in the world. Thank you very much. I, I, uh, I get that quite a bit, thank goodness. So uh, people do like them very well. They go over pretty good. They're made to order, hand cut, dipped in Richard's own batter then rolled in flour before he fries them to lip-smacking perfection. You know, the onion ring is not really designed to eat on television, but I'll do my best. <laughs> like those much? <laughs> if you like fries, those are also fresh cut and delivered piping hot, never knowing a moment of life under a heat lamp. The chicken salad sandwich is my favorite. Dino opted for the cheeseburger and Ron the chili and cheese. And the service at Chef's is the kind you can't get from a place where there's a new waiter or waitress every time you visit. Expect Sue Humphreys, who worked behind this same counter with her mom for a decade back when this was the Jones Malt Shop, to hustle your order out in record time. I try real hard to know my customers and get to know my customers, because I have some in here that I've served for many a year. At 11.20 every day, Chef's evolves into the Jones High School Cafeteria Annex as kids pour in the back door, make out their own tickets, and then enjoy lunch in a restaurant that carries on a five-decade-old tradition in Jones. Their parents were here, probably their grandparents were coming down here, a uh, different place at that time, so it just year after year keeps uh, Jones High School kids end up here at lunch. It's part of this small town charm Jones has held on to over the years and part of the reason Richard keeps Chef's hours limited. I don't have an interest in being a full-blown restaurant. Our niche is pretty much our onion rings and hamburgers. Now we do a full breakfast, um, have fantastic omelets, and so uh, but our, our, our breakfast crowd is kind of small. Our, our key is really our lunch. And if you need any other reason to come pay a visit to Chef's, consider Richard's desserts. All homemade, ranging from the apple pie he served up while we were there 
to his beloved coconut cream. Yeah, you did. pop in all the time, see if you can get a piece of coconut. And instead, you have something else, come back the next day. That's our show for this week. We hope you've enjoyed spending a little time with some of Oklahoma's great musical sons like Woody Guthrie and John Fulbright and Byron Berline. We also want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Byron for hosting us from his double stop fiddle shop and music hall in Guthrie. And by the way, he's got a brand new book that literally is hot off the presses. You need to check that out. He's hilarious. I know the book is going to be great. You bet. Coming up next week, our Beat the Heat plan goes shopping. We've collected some shopping destinations all around the state, well worth the drive. Plus, an iconic Tulsa museum that provides not only a visual feast, but one for your tummy as well. Hope you'll join us. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.